Can any of you pronounce this? There it is. No? Well, neither can I. Well, I can, but I'm not trying it live on air. I know a man who can, though. The requirement not to be rude about judges only applies to judges in this country. It does not apply to judges in the European Union. So let me, Mr. Deputy Speaker, be rude about them. Let me indulge in the floxy knocky nihilopilification of judges of the European Union. Let me quote from the book of Amos about judges of the European Union. For we know their manifold transgressions and their mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe, they turn aside the poor at the gate from their right. These are the judges of the European Union. Her Majesty's government is right to stand up to them. They do not deserve their money, and it is iniquitous, iniquitous, that they have allowed themselves to be judges in their own cause. It is a breach of justice. It ought to be criminal. Jacob Rees-Mogg in the House of Commons. That word is actually the longest ever entry in Hansard. And for those of you who have no idea what Hansard is, Here's Quentin Letts with our A to Z of Parliament. H is for Hansard, available at 7.30 every morning. This little publication records what is said in the Houses of Parliament by our legislators. Parliamentary reporting only really goes back to Napoleonic times, when William Cobbett, that terrific journalist, decided that it was an outrage that the people didn't know what was going on in Parliament. Cobbett produced glorified histories of lawmaking in British Isles. He, in 1811, sold his interest to Thomas Curzon Hansard, son of the printer who served the House of Commons, and slowly you get the arrival of verbatim reporting in the House of Commons. The people at last could find out how the laws were being reached at. Here we are in the Parliamentary Archives Act Room with all the ancient statutes stacked up. Vellum, this is. Animal skin. But if these are impressive, then what about this little job? The Daily Hansard. Thousands and thousands of words ensuring that we have an accurate verbatim report of what our legislators say. Pretty good. MPs have the ability to tidy up a little bit of what they say. Some of their hesitations get taken out. John Prescott's words used to be given major surgery by Hansard. And it doesn't always capture the full atmosphere of the House of Commons. When there's terrible, raucous laughter, it just says, very politely, laughter. Or when people are heckling like mad, you just get interruption. But this daily publication catches the arguments that are used in Parliament to produce these laws. It also catches ministers' answers. They can't wriggle off the hook after this. Hansard employs dozens of reporters and sub-editors with brilliant shorthand skills, and you ought to see their fingers flying across the stenography keyboards. They turn this thing round in record time. It's now online too. And at a time in our history when journalism has a slightly spotty reputation, the people from Hansard are really keeping the side up. Well played, lads. And Jacob Rees-Mogg, it's quite a long name on its own, is with us now. Welcome back to the Daily Politics. What does this word mean? The actual habit of estimating as worthless. Estimating something as worthless. Yes. And what was the word, just can, remind me? Can you give me the Latin derivation? Oh, uh, well, uh, no, not offhand. Can't you? Why not? You use you words and you can't give the proper derivation. Devera well, I don't almost. always have to give the etymology of the every word I use, but I can pronounce it. I mean, but it comes, everyone knows it comes from flocci, meaning a whisper, a piece of wool, nocci, meaning a trifle, uh, and uh, pili, nili means a nothing, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a pili, meaning a hair or something insignificant. I mean, it could have been uh, flossio, non facio. What does that mean? I couldn't give a straw. That's the literal interpretation. I know, yes. If but you were being rude, you might say I couldn't give a damn. Of but I wouldn't be Why so didn't rude you use on... the smaller one rather than the longer one? I didn't think of it, actually. Mm. Um, Floxy Noggy Nihilopilification came to mind, as it does from time to time. Does it often come to your mind? <laughs> it's one of those words I've known since I was a schoolboy. When, when, when it comes to your mind, is there room for anything else in your mind? Lots, and particularly pointing out that what we are wanting to indulge in the Floxy Noggy Nihilopilification of, ah, which is there. the European Court of Justice, mm. which is the key point. That the Not the judges, European Court in Strasbourg. No. The one in Luxembourg. The ECJ 
ruled to their own benefit that the pay rises of European officials had to go through and that included their own pay. And this is against one of the most important principles of justice, that you should not be a judge in your own cause. And thankfully, using this odd word has got some attention to that tremendously important point of corruption in the law courts of Europe. And it's, it's okay, very important Okay, you made that point, that and you made it in the across. Commons, you made it again. Huh? The big issue, I want to uh, know if it was resolved, did the hands out people have to ask you to spell it? No, hands are fantastic, as, as Quentin Letts was saying. I find they improve my speeches. They take out the arms and R's, mm. and they make what one was saying better sense and flow more elegantly. Now, you spoke at this Tory dinner last night, didn't you? I did, yes. Where, where was it? It was um, just the other side of Lambeth Bridge. Right. And uh, wh whereabouts on Lambeth Bridge? Just the other side of Lambeth just Bridge. The other There's side. a Plaza Hotel. Plaza Hotel, right. Um, you spoke as a new MP. I did, yes. What was your message? My message was that the Conservatives are wonderful and the Liberals aren't quite as good. So it was quite controversial with the audience. Really then. controversial. It was a hard-hitting, tough message. Are you expecting promotion immediately afterwards? Uh, no, I don't think that will follow. Why aren't you in the government? Um, because I'm backbencher, which I love being, representing uh, yeah. the county of Somerset. Who could ask to do anything more than that? Your favourite word, how many more letters does it have than anti-disestablishmentarianism? One is the correct answer. <laughs> you can indulge in the flop in the hillification of the anti-disestablishmentarianists if you want, but that might be showing off. <laughs> and we've now run out of time. <laughs> We'd have plenty of time, we haven't used such big words.